Good morning, I'm Lynn, and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. I'm heading to the coveralls to see what today has in store for us, because you just never know. We're up at the coveralls, Ernie's got his grain here. All the sheep in the barns have noticed we're here, so everybody's at the doors waiting for us to go feed them. We always start with this coverall first. Here's how we feed our round bales to the rams. Most of you know this, but we put the round bales in the feeders on their flat side. Uh, it's very common for people to put them on the round side, but the reason you put them on the flat side is that it's easier for the hay to fall off when they're eating. It just peels off. If it's on the round, because that's how it's wrap, uh, wrapped up, they have to really tug and pull to get the hay out, which uh, will often discourage sheep from eating. And discouraging sheep from eating is totally what you don't want to happen because sheep that don't eat, don't grow, don't stay in condition, you want your sheep to be eating. And always we have the little onlookers who want to see what the boys are up to and vice versa the boys will go over there and check in on them. And all you have to do now is cut the strings off. So the strings come off a lot easier this way too. Because again, if you try to pull strings off and it's laying on the round, sometimes they're quite hard to pull out. And that shows you how difficult it would be for a sheep to pull out. If you have to use all your muscles to pull a string out, how can a little mouth have the same strength to pull the hay out? So, um, Try to remember to put your hay on the flats. Gaston doesn't like the dogs, so he uh, lets them know he doesn't want them around. He doesn't hit them, but he does threaten to, and I'm sure if they didn't back off, he would hit them. It's another scorching day today. We usually like to do as little as possible with the sheep on hot days, but we are getting behind. So today the plan is uh, to get our little Dorset lambs moved to the front of the barn in with the, that little small group of Suffolk and we're going to deworm the Dorsets because they were the ones that were outside um, for quite a long time grazing and they didn't get dewormed along with the rest of them. Uh, and we saw a little bit of signs of tapeworm with them. So tapeworm requires a white dewormer, so we're going to run them through, do the deworming, and then we're going to run them through again and we're going to tattoo them. So this is all the tattooing equipment. Um, right now it's the K year, so I'm putting the K letter in ready for when we get out there. Okay, so each, um, I have a whole bunch of little numbers, that's a zero. And I have the one in there because I'm pretty sure the first ones are going to start at 10. But I'll double check my records before I do that. So The first uh, one we do will be 10K. And we lock those in. And I haven't even done any tattooing and brought the ink out yet. And you can see it all over my hands. It's an extremely messy process. But we want to get it done before the shear comes so it doesn't get all over there nicely sheared fleeces. So that's our goal today. So the first order of business is to get these ewe limbs out of here. So we're going to run them around the back of the barn and then back in through the front section. Hopefully the shearer will be here and these guys will get sheared off.
Come on. There you go. There you go. No, get in, get in. Okay, that's step one. The clear dewormers don't work on tapeworm. And uh, that's why if you ever see little segments, they look like pieces of rice in their poop. Uh, that's tapeworm segments, and you're going to want to deworm them with valvesine. Tapeworm is not a bad, horrible worm like uh, the barber pole worm is, which will kill them um, and cause anemia. But it sits in their stomach and eats their food, so they're going to get in poor condition. Uh, so it still could uh, kill them if you if you never treated it, but um, but normally they are just gonna lose condition and be fine. So if you don't treat your tapeworm, you're basically feeding the tapeworm and not the sheep. Do you want me over there? So we have to round them up into a corral area. And even the little lambs are getting used to it. They've already gone into the chute. So I'm guessing we're gonna do the black ones too just while we're here. So we get as many as we can in the chute. The more that's in there, the easier it is to get their heads up and do them. There, because now they can't move around as easily in the chute when you're trying to give them shots or dewormer. You just put it in the corner of their mouth, boop, and done. And then when they're all done, release the guillotine, and out they go. And we just did, I think there's 15, 22 sheep and about... 10 minutes. Okay. It's just gonna roll out this little bale of hay that's left and then we're gonna move this group of dorsets to the back of the barn because we're gonna put a Suffolk breeding group up here. Probably the uh, grades that are going to uh, the other guy. We're still negotiating if he wants some bread or not so we'll just put the ewes in here uh, shortly. And if he wants a ram in here with him, we'll do that for him as well. We just got to get them. Uh, so we're going to put these into the back. And when we have rams side by side in these breeding barns, we use these creep feeders as a wall because they're thicker. And the rams can't push them and they can't fight through them. So... Um, we find them handy for divider walls with rams. So Arnie's getting the skid steer to move the creep feeders and I'm starting to take the wall down. It's gonna be replaced with a new wall. But right away, everyone's gotta to go to the other side of the wall, except for these two. Cause uh, the new pen is always the exciting pen. Hey Angel, really exciting. So the wall is totally down now. The old wall. Yeah. Everyone's back there. Didn't really, well, I didn't have to push them at all. They went back because uh, they think there's something over there that they were missing before. So he's coming in. We have to be careful. These uh, creep feeders are extremely heavy. That's why they make good dividing walls. We've told you before we don't love them as feeders because they're 
really hard for the soup to eat out of with those small spacing and putting their feet in the trough at the front. That is dividing walls there extremely good because uh, they're so heavy rams can't uh, destroy them. Max, come here. Max, good boy. a feeder at each end and a double gate to go between them. And here comes the second one. Okay, now that we're moving these here, they've been in their pen with them forever. Now these are an interesting thing because they're in a new spot. Come on, back you go. Back you go. Go on, Betty. And in the past they do jump over just a single gate and they will also fight through those metal gates and leave their head prints. They can't fight through these uh, big big uh, creep feeders and we put a double gate there too just to restrict it so they can't touch each other now they can stand on the creep feeder if they want it and go nose to nose but they tend not to go over it because of the v-shape and stuff it's very awkward and uh, we only ever had one one ram do that and it was general and he went over, and that's how uh, Chewy was born. But it's not common. Usually this is enough protection. This is the straggler group. We're just giving them some uh, small square bales that are a little nicer. Hi, you guys. Do you need nicer hay, too? Is that what you're saying? Is that your point? Well, the chutes are just getting reconfigured. This was the sorting chute we had for sorting the chute. So uh, you swing the gate back and forth and you can uh, set up two groups. But we're not sorting anyone today. We're going to be tattooing this afternoon. And for tattooing, we found that the head gate works best because um, it holds their head still. They can still move it up and down, but they can't get away on you. So. Next, we have to take the guillotine down. When you have the sorting gate on, we found the guillotine is the easiest thing to release and catch the sheep with.
So while he had the forks on the skid steer for moving those creep pens um, around the drinker and the keeper lamb pen, uh, the, it was getting really mucky from me cleaning the drinkers. So when they go to drink, technically they'll stand in the mud and they could uh, get foot issues. No, no one in this pen has got any foot issues, but uh, it's got that potential if you leave a mucky area, especially where they're going there all the time to drink. So we're just gonna just clean around the drinker. Hi girls! Having a little run out here. <laughs> few more days and these guys will be sheared off. We're not going to shear the Shetland off. She was sheared off earlier. And with winter coming on, we don't want her um, to get cold because she's uh, the old girl and she's a slender sheep so we want her to build her wool back but the, all the ewe lambs will be sheared off we're not letting these guys out to pasture but while we're doing this they can go out they've been off this field a month anyway so there should be no parasites but uh, we don't want to let them out full time because um, the fields just aren't regrowing. We've had no water whatsoever. So until we start getting rain and the grass starts growing again, um, they do have to stay in. So thanks to Max, they're all way out in the field, having a good time out there. They won't want to stay out too long anyway because it's really hot today. But right now, a breeze has come up this morning. It was really, really hot. But now a, a breeze is coming up and it feels a little nicer. If you're not doing anything, it's actually a beautiful day. When you're working, you start to sweat because of that high humidity. These are the girls. They're happy. Oh, hi girls! <laughs> Even my Shetland's running. Good girl! Good girl! <laughs> See, that's amazing. So we're tattooing right now. This is actually Jezebel, the first one we're doing. She's going to be 10k. And so he puts the uh, ink on the ear and then he punches with the tattoo plier. And you, you wait till you hear that crunch so you know that the needles have gone through. And then you take a toothbrush and just to make sure that the tattoo sticks, you kind of rub it around gently in the holes. And uh, that's how you get a good tattoo. If you don't do that, Oftentimes people will have crappy tattoos. And that went so smooth and fast that we're going to do the suffix as well before the accountant gets here, hopefully. bringing the suffix over because it went quicker than expected. Smooth as silk. Good girl, Katie. Max, Ben, come on. Ben. 
Sheep are starting to get the routines now that we've been doing so much work with them. And they're getting to know us and like working with us because everything goes really smoothly. So we got all the Suffolk done too. We might go try finish off with uh, the show rams. Come on, come on you guys. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, you guys. Come on. put these guys back in the barn. They all got their nice little tattoos. Come on, Ben. Come on, Max. Good girl, Katie. See how Katie pushes behind them? The other, the puppies are trying to keep getting in front of them. But Katie stays right behind. Max, good boy. Well, we got all the lambs that are gonna be tattooed, tattooed. We don't uh, tattoo the rams, except for the show rams, unless somebody wants them tattooed. But one thing we do do with the rams is we DNA test them. So we already DNA tested the show sheep. But now, since we have a little more time, because things are going pretty fast today, we're going to DNA test all the registered sh ram lambs. And to do that, we have a special uh, tagger that we got from... Greeley, Colorado. It's called a company called Gene Check. They do DNA test testing and they're certified in the US and Canada. It's a little tag like that that goes in their ear, matches up with the individual sheep. When you punch when you punch this through the ear, what happens is a little piece of skin falls into that little container there and you just mail the tag with a piece of skin in to the company and in a week or two you'll get the results back and when we say we're DNA testing we're testing for scrapey resistance because we want all our sheep to be scrapey resistant and I have a video about scrapey resistance if you want to look that up if you're not sure about that I did a whole video on scrapey resistance that you can look at as well. Well, I meant to show you I was doing the DNA testing and totally forgot the, we were just going to show you the last one. But they're all done, so we're going to await their results. We did, I think we only did 10 of them because a lot of them are grades and some of them were already done. Okay, now to bring the boys back to their home. We actually redid um, Casanova because we bought him in. And you just want to double check the ones that you bought in. They are what they say they are. Uh, you never know. Because he is supposed to be an RR. That's why we bought him. Well, that was a really busy day. We got the lambs dewormed. We got everybody tattooed. We got DNA testing done. 
Our accountant actually came by today and we got uh, our books done. I made a batch of spaghetti and I'm just gonna pick some of our spices to go in with the spaghetti sauce. And uh, I think that'll be it for today. So thanks for joining us and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next day at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.